Now, every single week we announce the year's most important car. But this week, we actually mean it. Don't worry, it's not this. This is the Mazda MX-5 you know and love. The icon that today stands as the best-selling roadster of all time. Even though it's been around for 15 years now, the current car is still the best in its class. That is quite simply an awesome achievement. So, no pressure then for what's coming up next. Yes, this is the brand new MX-5, and frankly, you wouldn't blame it for hating its dad right now. I can't think of a car in recent memory that's carried such a weight on its shoulders. It's like the White Album following Sergeant Pepper's, Godfather 2 following The Godfather, Police Academy 6 following Police Academy 5. You can still easily tell which family tree it comes from, but this new MX-5 is altogether more chunky and more muscular. This version, the 2-litre Sport, costs £18,900, 900 more than the equivalent old model. But for that, you get quite a lot more car. It's longer and wider. It has more airbags and options like traction control. That all sounds great, but actually, it could be a bit of a worry. You see, the Mazda MX-5 was always great, not because of what it had, but because of what it didn't have. It was basic and light, and that's what made it nimble and so good to drive. So the question is, has all the grown-up stuff spoiled the show? To find out, it's time to reintroduce the MX-5 to its old friend, the B-Road. First, a bit of culture. When the boffins at Mazda worked on the handling for the new MX-5, they followed the principle of Jimbatai. Japanese for horse and rider in perfect harmony. That all may sound a bit crouching kitten hidden hippo, but as soon as you drive it, the penny drops. It's as though you and the car are one. 50-50 weight distribution. Rear-wheel drive, simple, direct steering. It is brilliant. The engine in this one, a 2-litre with 158 brake horsepower, takes the car from 0 to 60 in 7.9 seconds. So it's not exactly super fast then, but I'm really not bothered. If anything, that's just an excuse to rev the nuts off. This means you have to change gear quite a lot, but in the MX-5, even doing that is a pleasure in itself. You feel so involved. It's a, a short shift. It's snappy and mechanical, and it means you're not just shifting cogs around. You are Terence Stamp on the King's Road in the 1960s. The reason it feels so good to drive is, I think, because the engineers have been such geeks. For example, this new MX-5 is bigger and has more stuff on it, but it weighs just nine and a half kilos more than the old one. And they've done it with really anal stuff, like shaving 84 grams off the weight of this mirror. So, buy two bags of crisps and you've undone all their good work. Think about that next time you peckish. The fact is, a car can only be great when everyone who's making it is completely clear about what it's meant to be. And that is the case with the MX-5. For example, the engineers agreed they didn't want the new car to have any more grip than the old one. And that says it all. When most companies bring out a new car, it has to have more of everything, because more sounds like progress. But this is so simple, so sharp, that suddenly it makes the Z4, the Boxster, the Mercedes SLK look like big, heavy, wallowy, cumbersome things. And why would I pay twice the money of the Mazda to have them? Why? It is then a worthy successor to the old MX-5. But we're not done yet. You see, we're actually in Ireland because we've been invited over for a challenge. Why don't you bring a car over here for a race, it said, but not a race against another car. Oh, no, this is a race against something with a bit more pedigree. Uh, chub. 
The Greyhound is an amazing piece of engineering. It can go from 0 to 45 miles an hour in just six strides. It's so fast that during one 30-second sprint, its body expels enough heat to boil a glass of water. Indeed, the Greyhound is the second fastest accelerating animal on the planet. The first is the cheetah, but they're a bit scary. The question is, though, can a dog on its home turf beat our car? What we're up against is Mama Tina. She's won 10 of her last 20 races, and she's worth 25 grand, which is considerably more than the car. For this race, I'm going to be using BT Dogu. Japanese for the ancient art of driving a sports car around a greyhound track faster than a dog. Now, so that I don't plough into one of Ireland's most valuable mutts, we're going to race using the Olympic cycling method. Car and dog will start from opposite sides of the track and race one lap to their respective finish lines. Right, here we go. And we're off! No grip! No grip at all! Give me grip! Dog takes off like a rocket! In fact, in just over a second, she was already doing 45 miles an hour. 50 miles an hour, but I'm going to have to really slow for the corners. I'll lean like the dog does. That might help. I'm going to try and rally turn away. This is the perfect car for racing a greyhound round a track. Braking. This is a fantastic little car. But is it good enough to beat Muttley? Mm -hmm. Way out against Master MX5. Number one! The dog's time and the car's time. Bugger. <laughs> Love that car, it's fabulous. So do I, but not as fast as a dog. Well, no, it isn't, but the dog makes a very good point because dogs, well, all animals, in fact, are rear wheel drive. They are. Because, no, think of the front wheels, they do the steering, and then the back wheels kind of. That's why a terrier will always oversteer on like a polished wooden floor that, into a kitchen cabinet. An elephant is definitely not rear-wheel drive, that's four-wheel drive. Why'd you make that? It's got four knees, an elephant, that's what's good off-road. Yeah, and a hyena, that's front-wheel drive. No, it's not, that's rear-wheel drive. It like isn't, I promise you, a hyena is different than any other animal that's got front-wheel drive. It does, oh, it's wheels at the front, propulsion and steering, and then its back wheels are there just to keep its bottom off the ground, like a Spitfire. How do you know that stuff? I just know these things. These, it's like Attenborough doesn't give you this information, let's be honest. <laughs> I like cats. They can drift. If you watch, no. It's true. If you watch, if you watch a terrier chasing a cat... The classic chase. Which it is, absolutely. Yeah. You'll watch the cat will hold it in a huge slide, and then nine times out of ten, the terrier will oversteer off, spin off into a car. But, but the terrier's having more fun, because oversteer is more fun, and coming around like this, the whole than, the, than a four-wheel drift. It is. This is a service. Yeah. Because what we've proved is that a hyena isn't as much fun as a dog, oh, because... A hyena understeers. A hyena understeers. That's the drawback with a hyena, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, it is. It is. So a dog... I'm just going into this... A dog oversteers, oversteers, which is more fun... ..than an understeering hyena, so you want a Mazda MX-5 because it's rear-wheel drive. <laughs> How about that for some logic? <laughs> <laughs>